Hello, my name is Rocco Pacora, and I lead technical product marketing for analytics here at Click. You may have heard of us as a visualization tool or have even heard of our ClickView product, but this may be perhaps the first time you've ever heard of Click's end-to-end -end vision. We've invested heavily in our vision of an end-to-end -end platform, and Click Cloud can transform real data into informed action. From integrating sources across your data universe to managing data easily and ensuring data is business ready. But most importantly, enabling your users to make informed actions in stride with your data, seizing the business moment. ClickCloud offers all the data integration and analytic services you need to transform raw data into informed action, supported by a rich set of foundational services. With cloud agnostic options, you have the flexibility in how and where you store and analyze data. And we have recently announced our intent to acquire talent that will expand our integration, data fabric, and data management capabilities. So to begin my data development life cycle, I'm gonna begin in the integration portal of my Click Cloud tenant. Here I can build enterprise grade data pipelines from any source system, data universe, and you're able to build out these different pipelines to transform, store, or land data for expanded processes or even for end users for consumption. Here you can see different data connectors that I have, as well as different data projects. If I go into data projects, here I have a Snowflake database that I'm plugging into. And what I'm doing is actually, here's the visual representation where I've onboarded and staged that data. I've ran some SQL legacy transformation to normalize that data, and I've landed it into Click Cloud for my end users. So what that looks like for end users is a data set available for use right inside of their catalog. So what I want to do is create a new analytics application with that data set. And the first thing the application is going to ask me to do is feed it some data. So let's take a quick browse through our 100 plus connectors that range from cloud to cloud connection, as well as our the gateways, which allow for safe, secure access to data behind your enterprise firewall with Click Cloud. So looking at that same Snowflake database, I can either create an application now with SQL pushdown using direct query. I'm looking for a little bit more of an interactive experience and I'd rather use data from a catalog that's kind of already been curated for me. So going in, I'm going to pick a couple data sets. I can even preview a data set and get an interpretation of that data from the system. Here you can see different types of data across the field values as well as null values. And I can see this observation status has 200,000 plus null values. It's actually a fact table, so that doesn't Something's not right, I should probably look into that. I want to actually select all of these fields. Those are the three tables I'll load. As this data is loading, what you're going to see is a visual representation of each table that I've loaded. So without any code at all, I can simply press a table and see a color representation of how to build an association or relationship between tables. So looking at the association between these two tables, you can see country, state, key. I can hold down this table and easy build a multi-fact uh, data model. If I actually want to do a couple, you know, some data prep. I know that I looked at some damage data earlier and I want to create a bucket because I know that my analysts really like kind of having different tiers for different items like that. So I'm going to just title these low, medium, high for the three buckets. I can create that bucket and you can see this field here has just been created. I'm going to actually rename it image tiers because I know that's the nomenclature that my analysts like. So what I'm going to do is load this data. And within seconds, I've already built out that data pipeline. I've created a multi-fact data model and I'm already ready for analysis. What I want to do is take a step back and show you governance through two different layers. One being, if I go and look at this data set, here you can see different attributes, visualizations of the metadata and classifications like FEMA for this data set. But what actually caught my eye is since I've landed this data, I can see nine applications are already using this data set. So I'm gonna go look at the impact analysis and I get a read of all of the different apps that are actually using it. Going into that app that I just built in front of you, here we can see 
different lens of that same process, but from the analytical user's point of view. Here you can see all the different data that I brought in from FEMA's database. I've normalized that data into a single table, right? And then just looking at how it's been um, seen upstream into the application I built, you can also see all of those other data files that are being used within that data model, which is pretty cool to have that type of governance and visibility into those processes. So the next level of governance is really at the metric level for end users. Um, I did build that bucket out of CPI, cost, uh, consumer product, consumer price index, and I wasn't like I wasn't totally sure because it's new. So I can actually search for CPI in this glossary that my data stewards built. I can actually go and look at what data sets there are. I can see total CPI adjusted cost. And I can actually go and verify this for my users to know that this metric has been kind of already industrialized. I'm going to begin using SQL pushdown through direct query. So this application uses SQL pushdown to a Snowflake database, the same database that we showed earlier. And this is pulling NOAA Global Weather Station data daily across 20 years, 200 plus countries, and 78,000 stations. Aggregated total of the database is 714 million rows. Seamlessly, I can drill down from 700 million rows down to 12, and what I actually want to do is generate an application on demand. So this process is governed and the design of the dashboard uh, is actually already curated. So as a user, I can take a snapshot of that big data. I can bring my selections across. And here you can see I have a different dashboard that gives me a little bit more interactive analysis than previously through SQL Pushdown. So I can make selections. I can look at different metrics. Um, but I can also kind of you know, hone in a little bit more. So I'm actually curious in this hotspot near my house. Uh, I might have to check my gutters when I get home, but what I wanna do is see uh, a live status of flood gauges across the US. So this is a near real-time dashboard pulling data from every 15 minutes. Here you can see we have four major floods, two moderate floods and 32 minor. Uh, I can actually remove non-flooding gauges and kind of block out that noise and what's interesting is because I look at this app a lot, I can tell that this cluster in the Midwest is actually from a storm last week. But looking at California, you can see that they're getting hit heavily with some precipitation. I can go in the notes and actually leave a little bit of uh, insights for my, oop, I already see it. Janelle left me um, a snapshot of a data set that I can look at. So I can kind of collaborate through my discussion board there. But what actually got me curious is how many of these extreme weather events happen? So I wanted to kind of look at an animation where I've overlaid population with extreme weather events, weather events that have had over a billion dollars worth of damage. So what I'm going to do is press play and the dash line is population growth. And what you'll see is especially now through 1927 to 1960, uh, the population went from 2 billion to 3 billion. And what you'll see is a very powerful visualization showing the correlation across population, um, manufacturing demand, consumption, and all of those extreme weather events. What you're seeing is blue indicates flooding and red indicates just an aggregate of all total weather events. How many of these weather events have actually created over a billion dollars worth of damage? 338 totaling out to $24 trillion in damage and $71 billion per event. So um, what's interesting is, you know, I can drill down using this linear regression to give me some trend line, my natural language object kind of honing in. But what's, curious, what's interesting is looking at just surface level, the southeast is definitely a hot spot. But if I were to drill down in the flooding, you'll see that the grain belt in the Midwest is actually very at risk. Uh, to flooding. Not only are the the great the, the floodplains right, but they are they are where we grow a lot of our food. So this has me curious on a couple things: population exposed to flooding and agricultural flooding. Now, what I want to do is use my Insight Advisor and AI to help me build out an application on the fly. So I'm going I'm going to use master items, which are a governed library of different data assets. Here I can pick agricultural value that's at risk to flooding. I can add this to a sheet.
I want to also see population exposed to flooding as a percentage. So I can see 13%. And then what I want to do is use analysis types to help non-technical users really be able to use more complex analyses without needing the technical skill sets. And this is just kind of a curated guided process, right? So here I need to know two measures in one dimension. I can pick population exposed to river flooding, population exposed to coastal flooding by county. I can add this to my sheet. And then what I want to do is use natural language querying. So I can type in agricultural value by state. I can see a history of that. And I can easily select that and kind of follow my hunch around is the grain belt being impacted by those floods. And here we can see, yes, right? Iowa, Texas, Nebraska, Kansas. Uh, so I want to add this to my sheet. Once I do that, I can go into that sheet, the same dashboard that I just built, and I can begin building out different pieces of my analysis without anything else because nothing's wired together and the associative engine just allows me to have free data discovery. I'm excited to showcase a real solution we've deployed within our public sector customers. What we've done is we've created an analytics tool for federal emergency response teams to help direct state, county, and different municipalities in the preparation of a large weather event. Here you can see a real-time hurricane tracker. We don't have any really to kind of analyze. So what we're going to do is use Hurricane Nicole as an example. Here you can see colors that have, we've created for the top percentiles of wind speed based on their, obviously, visualizing their danger, right? So what we've done is we've created an analysis for federal and localized teams to understand not only the hurricane path, but its impact based on their resources. So here you can see the number of shelters, evacuation capacity, and the population projected to be hit, not even just by uh, a KPI, but even also by each wind speed and also based on the timing of the landfall. What we've also done is we've mirrored that analysis for the number of hospitals and type. So coming from someone who's, you know, lived through a few hurricanes and, and floods, uh, it's really interesting to be able to offer our customers a very quick and easy way to slice data in the nick of time to save people, such as finding which hospitals have hospital pads to go and rescue those in flooded zones. Not only can they just do that, they can search for the type of hospital, look for certain types of trauma teams, and easily have that at their fingertips. So sharing these insights is important. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to send this report out to different teams. And what this is, is a workflow and automation that builds a PDF report, and not only to internal users, but also external users by creating a file into Dropbox. And then I've actually industrialized this process through submitting a ticket in JIRA, and then I'm sending it out to my internal uh, recipients. Going into Dropbox, you can see here I've got this PDF report coming from that exact application. You can see different reports, and I've even passed selections through. So this evacuation report is for Florida. I go into the hospital impact report, really for the state of Georgia, as they prepare for populations to begin moving north into those areas to get out of, you know, danger zones within the northern parts of Florida. And then I've actually created an infographic that they can use in their marketing that use real data from these analytics, providing a more fun way to understand the damage of this, these types of events in that Gulf region. Going into the email that I've sent, here you can see the report that I've built, the same one from Dropbox. I've also brought it full circle into the application. So this is where really users get that next level form of context versus just that static PDF report. So you've seen different ways that have created kind of alerts, communications, file transfers. They can even use the analytics in real time to create these executive reports. So not only can I use these analytics in real time to refresh these, um, these stories, but I can even embed entire pages. And I think this is really cool because this is when the analytics actually becomes a roundtable type collaboration where users can actually go in here and find certain types of hospitals or run an analysis and actually zoom into a, a hospital at street view all within a presentation and just giving that next level feel for sharing analytics in real time to save real lives when it matters most. For the integration section, we've decided to integrate ChatGPT into our current available robust library of APIs. 
And what we've done is we've integrated across a variety of different elements within the development and discovery lifecycle. Here, I'm actually going to begin by going and finding data and asking ChatGPT to go and fetch data for me across the realms of the internet, right? And what you're going to see is a return on my prompt. And what I've asked it to do is provide me the top 10 agricultural disasters by country with year, month and day, damage in US dollar, and disaster type. And here you can see a preview of that data that is actually sourced for me. Once I have that, I'm going to create a data set. And here you can see this data set provided for me in my catalog. The second way that we've integrated ChatGPT is within this text uh, description of the data set that we just sourced. So there's already two ways that we've integrated ChatGPT to go find data for us and then give us a description of it. So I'm getting a little curious. I want to create an analytics app off of this data set. And I'm going to begin kind of going in and maybe building a couple measures and seeing what I can find out about this data set. The first thing I'm going to do is go and add measure. I'm going to show you how easy it is to democratize data in click, right? So what I can do is comment out my command line and I can simply just ask for a count of disasters, right? Very quickly, ChatGPT has learned our syntax and can go and return the exact formula that we want. Maybe I want the number of disasters for floods can easily build out that expression and I can begin using ChatGPT to build calculations for me and help me kind of, you know, enable myself to, for more discovery, more visualization building, and more insight identification. So next I'm going to go into my insight advisor and you can see the third way that we've integrated ChatGPT. We have our normal analysis types through the insight advisor, but we've also integrated ChatGPT to begin suggesting analyses for us based on that data. So going into my time series analysis, I can see right Insight advisor has very quickly given me some different visualizations based on the prompt that I've asked it through ChatGPT. But what it's also done is it's provided this background information for me and giving me a little bit more context around the data set itself, as well as the way that it should be analyzed based on what it's sourced. So very quickly, I've seen how I can use ChatGPT to source data, describe data, help me make calculations, and then give me a little bit of context and background information.